reminds me of when you're when you have your children and they think there's a boogeyman under their bed and they're really scared. But the reality is it's not real. And this these things that we're being charged with, this critical race theory that nobody seems to be able to define, is not being taught with, and it's not our children are not being brainwashed and it's time that we say no to this kind of um, legislation when we don't need it. We have things in policy and things in place already. Thank you. Senators, as we move forward in debate, I would just ca caution you to um, not, motive, not question motive or intent of an individual or an organization, but rather to stick to the language of the bill. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Burgoyne. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I attended the University of Idaho from 1971 to 1975. I've been an adjunct professor at two of our universities. I've been a civil rights lawyer, an employment law lawyer. My experience is that our institutions of higher learning in this state are as conservative as this state. Not less conservative, as conservative. Indeed, the case could be made that they are somewhat more conservative because the people who are in charge in our universities tend to be people who are older, tend to be people who um, are charged with the responsibility of educating, generally speaking, younger people, although that has changed in the last decade where the non-traditional student has become the traditional student. Um, but nonetheless, um, if anything, uh, I have heard uh, from people in Idaho about our higher education institutions, it is that perhaps they are just a touch more conservative than the state. I think legislation like this feeds a narrative that is not correct, that is not accurate. Um, and our job here should be to correct the record. We can be proud of our institutions. We can be proud of the educations that they provide to our offspring, children, grandchildren, and to ourselves. And um, I think it's unfortunate that the, um, the price being exacted by the body across the rotunda feeds this incorrect narrative. Thank you, Madam President. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Rice. Madam President, uh, you know, I like to address bills on the floor of the Senate. Not motivations, not speculations about the motivations of the body across the rotunda. And so, May I read from the bill? The senator may read, having identified the source. No public institution of higher education, school district, or public school, including a public charter school, shall direct or otherwise compel students to personally affirm, adopt, or adhere to any of the following tenets. That any sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin is inherently superior or inferior. That individuals should be adversely treated on the basis of their sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin. Or that individuals by virtue of sex race, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin are inherently responsible for actions committed in the past by other members of the same sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin. That's a simple restatement of the same principles that have been the foundation of the civil rights movement. It's, this, it's that every individual should be treated equally under the law. 
that no one should be compelled to believe something just because someone else does. That's the very underpinning of a free society. I don't have to go very far in my family to catch every single one of these categories. No further than first cousins. It is not wrong to state that it is the policy of this state that we will not compel people to be racist. We will not allow people to be compelled to think that people should be treated differently because of silly characteristics and silly distinguishments like this. We should never allow anyone to be compelled to acknowledge or adopt the position that people aren't accountable for what they did, they're accountable for what somebody else did. That's not appropriate. This bill doesn't attack free speech, it defends it. It defends it in the schools, in the universities, and in our society. It defends the right of the individual to not be compelled to adopt improper positions about the people around them. That's what the bill does. We vote on bills. And I'll be supporting this one. The president will caution members of the public in the gallery to please remain decorous during the debate. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Thane. Thank you, Madam President. I'd just like to uh, echo a little bit for the gentleman from 10 and talk about uh, what the bill does not do. Uh, the bill does not ban books. There's no topic banned in the, uh, in the bill. There's no book banned in the bill. It does not censor history. We can talk about anything in history. Uh, there's nowhere in the bill that something in history can't be talked about. Uh, the racism that has existed or uh, the Civil War, or the Civil Rights Movement, or anything in history is not banned by this bill. In fact, it does not ban the teaching of critical race theory. It doesn't ban that. It doesn't ban Marxism. It doesn't ban anything. What it says is we cannot compel, or schools can't compel students to personally affirm, adopt, or adhere to the following tenets, which were quoted by Senator from 10. You know, the United States uh, is quite an amazing place. The Constitution was signed in 1780, or was ratified in 1789. And since that time, there's been more technological progress than any time in the world's history, many times more. The previous 6,000 years was a relatively small advancements from time to time. And the United States led, led in that, the technological advancements. And the question is why? The reason is, is because people were able in the United States to take responsibility for their actions. They were able to make choices. In the old world where, these, where our ancestors came from, there were elitist systems, there were monarchies, kings, emperors, and their, their supporters that controlled most of society. And what happened in America is the power of the common men and women were unleashed because they could take responsibility for what they were going to do with their lives. The issue that is concerning me and why I think this is a great debate to be having about critical race theory and, and uh, on the floor of the Senate today is that there are those that believe that certain segments of our society cannot advance because of racism. 
that the system has to be modified or torn down in order for them to be to, to be raised up. What this does is it takes away their power. It gives responsibility to someone else to change their life. If one of the basic principles of the United States was that each person had the power within himself to make a difference in his life, his or her life. And critical race theory, though we're not debating that topic specifically, tends to undermine the notion that people are individually responsible for their own actions. This actually goes back to prior to Martin Luther in 1517 when he founded the 95 Thesis on Gutenberg Chapel. And his real issue was that each one of us were responsible directly to God for our actions. And this opened up, you know, the development of Western civilization, this idea of personal responsibility, personal empowerment. And I think this is a really important bill. It simply reminds us that this is the policies that have been in place in America for a long time. If there are teachers that are getting out of line, there are ways to, uh, to, 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 uh, to deal with that at the local level. And this just reminds us that what their proper role as a teacher really is. I urge your support for this bill. Thank you. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Wintrow. Thank you, Madam President. To, whoops, let me get that. People tell me I talk too softly, so I better make sure I talk into the mic. Thank you, Madam President and Senators. Um, I want to address a point that the Senator from 8 just made that I think is important to the discussion. And he talked about the principles and the history of our country based on personal responsibility, which I uphold. I do have personal responsibility of, as we well know, how I conduct myself on the floor. However, personal responsibility is interrupted and prevented sometimes when institutions block you, right? I first discovered that when I was a girl who was a very good baseball player. And I couldn't join Little League. And my mother told me, if you just work hard enough, you can do anything. And I said, okay, I'm going to join Little League. And she said, nope, you can't because you're a girl. One of the silly characteristics that the senator from 10 discussed. And I couldn't understand it. And I was better than most of the boys at hardball, as you can well imagine. So while I did work hard and I took personal responsibility, the systems in place stifled me and I couldn't get ahead. And to this day, based on gender, I still struggle. Now, the sponsor of the bill discussed, we got here, how we got here, which has been a really troubling, traumatic, and I think sometimes stressful time for all of us. And he discussed that we're here because even though we might not like all the language of the bill, it's a way to pass a higher education budget. And in the heart of that passing of the higher education budget in this, we've heard on this floor discussion of the social justice problem. We've heard reference to it over and over, and we've heard denigrating comments about critical race theory. So at the heart of this conversation is that. And when I was trying to research the bill, I decided I better look to see what other bills exist in the United States today. And so I did some research, as you all know, I like to do that, working at a university my whole life. And I found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other states that have similar legislation passing through their bodies. Basically similar language to ours in some of the iterations, denigrating critical race theory and talking about the divisive nature of talking about race in our classrooms. So that kind of tipped me off that this isn't just an Idaho issue. And so I looked at those states, and I started to do a little bit more research. And I do think that this is a reaction to what happened a year ago when George Floyd was murdered, and we saw that televised. People all over the country, estimated 20 million people took to the streets to mostly peaceful protests because blinders came off 
for a lot of white folks. And I remember the conversations vividly. And as white people, we've been taught that racism is an individual act of meanness and a bad word or something bad you do to somebody. But folks started to realize it's not just an individual act of meanness, it's about an institutional problem where values, attitudes, and beliefs have been interwoven into law over time. And folks started to wake up, so to speak. The blinders came off for many people. And then we saw institutions all over the country, including the US military, professional sports teams, men's and women's sports, government agencies, local government, enacting all kinds of discussions about reform and to make sure that the thing that happened there doesn't happen here. Even the Boy Scouts created a badge for diversity and inclusion. Pretty awesome. Now I think what this bill in its iterations in the history have caused me angst is because there's that risk of silencing discussion. Now I've been assured that it doesn't but in the very you know, first part of the bill, lines 22 through 27, Madam President, may I read from the bill? Having identified the source, the senator may read. Thank you, Madam President. It says, the, the Idaho legislature finds that tenets outlined in subsection 3A of this section, comma, often found in critical race theory, in quotes, undermine the objectives outlined in the following subsections based on that. Now, if you pull out often found in critical race theory, you have me a little closer in the bill. Because here now, the Idaho legislature is defining what it is. And that's not what it is. The other problem I have with the bill is it goes on on page two, line one, if I may continue to read. The senator may read. Thank you, Madam President. It says in subsection B, no distinction or classification of students shall be made on account of race or color. Now what that says to me is that when I you know, worked at colleges and universities, many times we have clubs and special organizations and graduations and so forth with the distinction of race. So this bill now says we can't have black graduation, but we can have rainbow graduation. Can't have the Hispanic student club but we can have a religious club. And then in the next part, in section two, it clearly says on line 15, no monies shall be expended by the state board, et cetera. No monies, not state, not private, none. So I think that's a, that's a big problem if I'm a student and in one of those clubs or organizations or otherwise. And I'm not saying that was an intentional part of the bill. I don't know. I'm not speaking about that. I, but it is an effect, because that's literally what it says. Now, as I, as I kind of close down in my statements, it's hard for me to vote for a bill that we are using as a bargaining chip to pass a budget that I know is going to be harmed. And I think all this started across our country is out of fear about what I've seen on an organizational website in our state, about a fear that my way of life, the American way of life, will be challenged. And I do think that in sometimes McCarthy-like uh, accusations. I have seen no evidence that any students have been indoctrinated. I have seen no incident documented. It's all speculation, conjecture, and a few anecdotes. Yet, we're still here, not red tape reduction, but red tape introduction for something that is not necessary. Because I can tell you for every, every complaint from a white student who felt uncomfortable in a discussion, I have a pocket full of discrimination claims from women and people of color from my institutions. And I've helped those students file complaints. I have never once seen an entire program or a class closed down because of it. That's not fair. 
but I hope this bill does create that opportunity. And I would, I would really end on saying it is absolutely uncomfortable to talk about issues of race and class and gender, but it's absolutely necessary. And as James Baldwin once said, famous author, black prolific author, he said, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. And so with an open heart, I truly hope that as a state, we can have these uncomfortable discussions that don't wind up in a piece of legislation and that we can address issues of race in our country. Thank you, Madam President. Is there further debate? Um, no, no. Uh, Senate will be at ease. There is no demonstration, public demonstration permitted from the gallery, from the public. This, is there further debate? Hearing none, Senator Crabtree is recognized to close debate. Well, thank you, Madam President, and I certainly appreciate the uh, senators around the floor here that uh, saw fit to uh, talk about this subject, and even those who will not vote for it. I appreciate hearing from you, uh, and your points are valid, and I appreciate you making them. As you know, this has been a long and winding road to get to this point of this particular bill. I've seldom seen one where we saw so many varying ideas that we had to amalgamate into a single piece of legislation. Uh, so I appreciate all the effort. Many of the people that worked on it are here. Uh, many of them are across the rotunda, and we've come to what I think is a reasonable solution. We're not intending to penalize or be punitive, but to simply guide and direct our educational efforts in here in Idaho. So I would close with uh, the thought that I started with, folks, and that is that we are not trying to do anything about telling the students what to think. We are trying to teach them how to think, and that's our educational effort here in Idaho. And with that, Madam President, debate is closed. Debate being closed, the question is, shall House Bill number 377 pass the Senate? The Secretary will call the roll. Hagenbrod? Anthon, Bayer, Bayer, Burgoyne, Burtonshaw, Cook, Crabtree, Dinhartok, Funk, Grove, Guthrie, Harris, Hyder, Hogebaum, Johnson. Madam President, 60 seconds, having not debated the bill. Senator Johnson has 60 seconds. Thank you, Madam President. Senators, I'm not going to support the bill, and it's not because I don't uh, have concerns that all of us do uh, with uh, such uh, theories as critical race theory. Um, however, I'm, I'm more concerned with the path we took to get here, and I think we're setting a precedent for next year and future sessions going down this road. So that does concern me, and also... Uh, when I look at uh, line 23 of the bill, if I get rid of that parenthetical information, uh, that is, don't give life to critical race theory on the floor of the Senate, I don't think the bill changes a whole lot from what we have in our Constitution. So I don't see that as a, as a threat in any way. But nonetheless, uh, Senator will vote no. Thank you, Madam President. Senator Johnson votes nay. Lee? Lent? Lodge? Martin? Nelson? President, 60 seconds. Senator Nelson has 60 seconds. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I guess I, I am saddened that we're here today on this bill uh, for a problem that there seems to be no evidence for. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the intent in, or of the uh, intent in this, I probably I would advocate for strongly, but the way we've got here and the the addition of critical race theory into this distresses me and we're doing this when we have no time to, to debate all day kindergarten you know those those two ideas have been percolating through the through the Senate this, through the legislature this year and we don't have time to make a concrete improvement to our our k-12 education system but we'll work on this it just really distresses with me that we're doing that and with that I vote no Senator Nelson votes nay Nye. Senator Nye has 60 seconds. 
Thank you, Madam President. Um, I vote no on this for various reasons, but the main one that people should think about is the cost involved in defending this bill that is ill-defined and probably unconstitutional. And that's a personal view. Um, by including the term uh, critical race theory in quotes or at all, we're inserting something that's totally undefined. It's not set forth in the legislation itself. You necessarily have to guess at its meaning. And therefore, when, when and if this bill is challenged, my guess is it'll be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars incurred in defending a bill that we don't need and uh, personally, I don't think uh, we should have. So for those reasons, Madam President, with respect, I'll be voting no. Thank you. Senator Nye votes nay. Patrick? Aye. Robbie? Madam President, 60 seconds to explain my vote. Senator Robbie has 60 seconds. So I'm also concerned about this bill. We, I feel like we are attempting to address this social justice thing, and I don't think we all really know or understand what that even means, um, or that it's a problem in our education system. We know Boise State's social justice curriculum teaches courses like ethics, diversity, everything from Harry Potter to graphic novels. So I'm still trying to understand fears about this curriculum and why critical education budgets that we need for our students and our economy are being held hostage. Um, and we're also um, potentially um, putting forth a chilling effect on free speech and students' ability to understand and learn a complete history of our country. So I vote no. Senator Rabe votes nay. Rice? Aye. Ricks? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Stennett? Thane? Aye. Thick? Aye. Ward Engel King? No. Winder? Aye. Wintrow? No. Woodward? No. Zito? Roll call shows 27 ayes, 8 nays, 0 absent and excused. A majority having voted in the affirmative, House Bill number 377 has passed the Senate. Is there a correction to the title? Hearing none, the title is also approved, and House Bill 377 will be returned to the House of Representatives. Madam President. Senator Anthon. I ask unanimous consent the Senate advance to the 13th order of business.